Hi there. I'm teacher Brendy. I am a language teacher. I have been for about more than 10 years now. It's been a while. Uh, whether you are a new student, whether this is your first video, your second video, your 500th <laughs> English video, I'm tired of this. <laughs> it's I want to welcome you to this um <laughs> to my channel and also to to a new way of approaching English through confidence. So uh this is the third video of uh a third lesson for a third free English lesson um on my channel. I will post um links above to and also and also down below in the bio to the other two videos. Um, which will, which are also available. If you go down below, you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a um, a playlist of all the videos that I have for students and all the videos I have for teachers. So don't don't hesitate to check that out. As for today, we're talking about something a little bit new today. The past two lessons have been a lot about culture. Our first our first class was the confidence class on film. We did a film called The Clue. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't. It's one of my favorite classes. Uh, the second class that we did was a class on music, telling stories through music. Today, we're going to do something that I have never, never, never taught. Uh, I have been taught this. So as a student, I, I had this class, but I have never taught this as a teacher. So I'm very excited to try this with you today. It's something that we call derivatives. We call these derivatives. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But for now, I want to take a second and have a little, have a small review, review period. We're going to talk about something called the Feynman technique, which is um, a sort of learning, a learning and reviewing method for um for concepts. It can be anything, honestly. You learn, you learn something. You, you approach it through different media, then you teach it to yourself. You teach it to someone else that you that does not know what it is. And then you then you come back and you think about what exactly what exactly was easy for me? Where did I get st stuck? Uh, 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 uh. Where did I get stuck? And what can you improve? Then, you simplify everything and you redo it together. So what we're going to is what we're going to do is though this will be divided into two parts. The first part, we'll take a look at this. We'll take a look at the method one more time. And then we'll go into the words that we that we learned in the second class, so the music class. Uh, I can also add some words. We'll keep it, uh, we'll keep it the second class, but I can also add some words from the first class if you'd like. If you haven't watched the second class, I'll put a link above. Go ahead, don't hesitate to check it out. It's a, it's a really <laughs> different kind of video, different kind of class. So go ahead and check it out and then you can come back. If you have, if this is not something you want to do right now, no problem, go ahead and skip over to the next part. And that's when we talk about what derivatives are. I will put, I will see if I can put a, a connection to that um, down below. Okay, so. Talking about the Feynman technique, the Feynman technique is divided, like I said, into four different parts. The first part is learning, choosing choosing something to learn about and learning about it. So what does this mean? You watch the video, <laughs> you watch the video, and we focus on the words, um, the words, the expressions that were most important to you. The ones, the words, think about the words, think about the topics, the the concepts that are most important to you, most relevant, most pertinent to your life. I chose some words that were key from last class, but maybe these words are useless for you. Maybe these words are not important. That's okay. What you can do in that case is, up, oh, take these words, delete them, and add the words that are important for you. Okay, I'm gonna go back and add these back. Um, so, so we can do this together. So once we've done that, what I want you to do is without really thinking, don't think too much about it, okay? But take a second, pause the video, 
find someone or even yourself you can talk you can talk to yourself in the mirror but find or maybe your dog i don't know <laughs> your dog your cat but find someone or something could be a stuffed animal to teach this information to okay how would you teach these words here what are some of the how would you go about if you were the teacher and you had students who um who wanted to learn these words how would you approach that what would you do and actually try teaching these words in you know five ten minutes max so go ahead pause the video and try to teach the words that you put in your little chart here okay I will continue. Once you're, once you're finished, go ahead and continue. Now, after having taught those words, you know, taught those words, where, what were the hard parts? Where, what words or what, what concepts were difficult for you? You know, maybe, maybe genre was, was okay. It wasn't too difficult. Bluff, maybe you had some difficulty with, what, uh, buff, excuse me. What was difficult about this? Ah, maybe you don't remember what the word lethargic meant, or maybe you remember, but it was difficult to, uh, how can I teach this? I, I, I don't know. Think about this and write and choose choose the words or the, or the topics that were most difficult for you. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about how you can not only teach those topics, that's not the key word here. I want to think of, I want you to think about how you can simplify simplify now simplify is a sorry excuse me i'm switching between keyboards here simplify is a word that is derived Ooh, that's very something thing <laughs> simplify is a word that is derived that comes from the word simple i'll put it here simplify it comes from the word uh, I'm getting all these different, all these different things. It's not, there we go. All these different things it comes from the word simple. It is derived from the word simple. I'll put the expression here as well. Aye, aye, aye. I'm having trouble with this keyboard, huh? Simplify is de derived from, there we go. The simplify is a word that's derived from the word simple. It's a verb that's derived from simple. So how can you make these, these words, these concepts easier for your students or your whoever it is you're trying to teach to learn? Up, 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 up. There we go. All right, that's a little bit better. So think about it and think about how you can make it easier. How can you make it more more interactive how can you make it more tangible more realistic easier for the for the for your students to learn maybe you can add some images maybe you can think of example sentences so we have different we have different things here and what we'll do is, is i want you to repeat these steps steps two and three over and over and over and over, over until you have it down until you remember until you know what these words mean until you feel comfortable teaching these words and then that's the moment when you feel more comfortable um, being able to use these words in everyday speech, okay? So if I can talk a little bit about the, I'll make myself a little bit smaller here, about the concepts and the, the way that I, I approach this. So I, I did not talk to you yet about, about this part. And there's a reason for that. I have I have my way of, of teaching things, you know, my ways of teaching things. And I don't want, I didn't want that to influence the way that you taught. What I wanted you to focus on was this. What were the words that were important to you that you wanted to teach, that you wanted to learn? And then you can think about how exactly you want to teach it. So exactly, the, if I can give you a little bit of hints here. I have my <laughs> beautiful colors here. This is more of the what question, what you want to teach. And this is more of the how, and how you want to teach those things. And you know, you know, you may not be a teacher. Teaching may not be something you're interested in or something you're good at. It's okay. And the goal is not to frighten you with all of these teaching 
all of, all of these different ways of teaching, you know, oh, like, oh, I have to teach this way, I have to teach this that way. No, the goal is not to, is not to frighten you, it's not to scare you with, ah, oh, teaching, ah, oh, how do I do this? What do I do? It's not about that. It's about finding the best way for you to take the information and use it, not just, not just understand it, no, 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 but to take the information and use it to teach somebody else, to use it, to apply it in a situation that you choose. So it, it, it really is based on you. There is no correct or incorrect way. There, there is always a way to improve how you teach, how you approach it, how you apply the methodology, how you apply the, this concept, excuse me. But there is no correct way of how to teach it. <laughs> I'm curious as to what, as to, yeah, after you finish this, I'm curious to know how it went. So go ahead and put, put a comment down below and tell me what happened. What went well? What didn't go well? What are some ways that you would improve? What are some advice you have some for for uh, for others? And uh, and we'll go through this. So, if I were to teach these words, um, which you did see in the last video, <laughs> that I would focus a lot on example sentences. That's one thing that's very very important when it comes to the teaching foreign languages. It's not only giving these example sentences, but giving meaningful. I, I, I giving meaningful uh, example sentences. So for example, what does that mean? If we have, uh, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. There we go, meaningful example sentences. For example, if we have the word genre, we can say um, there are two ways we can go about this. We can say, I like um, horror genre. There we go. I like horror genre. Okay. We can sort of understand maybe what genre means, but you know, it's still a little bit ambiguous. We don't know if we're talking about, you know, are we talking about the type? Are we talking about the um are we talking about the uh the thing, the things that happen? In it, oh, what you know? What are we talking about? If we talk about, for example, genres. If we give a sentence like this, for example, genres of film include. Up, like I said, we're gonna get there. There we go. Up, there we go. Um, or, um, or, um. Thriller. I'm, I'm. I have horror in my mind because it, we just finished. Uh, we just celebrated Halloween last week. I think it was last week, about a week and a half ago, and I have watched so many horror films <laughs> last month. I love it. It's a horror thriller, um, comedy, for example, comedy. Uh, make sure you put your little your comment here, and and what's another one and romantic or we can even say rom-coms for example to put together put together the word romantic and comedy rom-coms romantic comedy rom-com genres of film include horror thriller comedy and rom-coms okay this is a little bit more meaningful right so we have the idea of here in this first sentence for the one here here in this first sentence, we have um, we have an idea. Okay, maybe we're talking about uh, the type of film. Maybe we're talking about what happens in the film. In the second one here, we're talking. We give examples of what we're talking about. It's a lot clearer of what. It's a lot clearer to understand what we're talking about here. So here's one way we can do. We can also when we talk about example sentences, when we talk about images. There's, you know, we can give an image and have the student explain. So here we're talking about eliciting. Okay. To elicit, we can give the 
further and have students talk about what they see, what they see, you know, basically get that from them, elicit, 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 elicit information, details, anything they can about it. So their idea of what, for example, if we talk about uh, chaos, let's say, we're, let's say we're talking about the word chaos. Uh, let me pick this, excuse me. Up. If we're giving a, an image of the word chaos, what are some things that we could talk about? Let's say here we could talk about, here we have a fire. Chaos is <laughs> quite, quite connected to fire. We have a person here who's ah, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So we have a person here whose whose hair is standing up. He's a little bit scared. We don't know. And we can say this is ha, ba, 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 ba. chaos. Now, just a little a little um connection. In my last video, I spelled chaos wrong. It is a o a o chaos a o s. We'll, I'll do a video very soon about errors. But for now, chaos. If I show you, for example, this, uh, I can even erase this, honestly. If I show you this, um, let's say you're my student, and I show you this image. Words, can you tell me? What are some ideas? What do you see? Some people might say fire. Some people might say, um, I don't know, a man. Some people might say um, scared. Some people might say scream. And there are lots of uh, lots of other words. And I say, okay, if we put all of this together, we create a word which means chaos. Now, that's part one. Part two, how can we use chaos in a sentence? And then you can have you have you can have students come to you know you can elicit from students you can have students give you some examples of what chaos might be for example let's say a student says um, I was chaos oh, um, I was chaos uh, when my house burned, burned down to the ground. I'll <laughs> make it very dramatic. <laughs> okay, I was chaos when my house burned down to the ground. Okay, it's okay. We'll take a look here. Hmm, I was chaos. They have, they have the idea of what chaos is. It's craziness. It's not, it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. It's um, people are scared. It's, it's, you know, we can talk about loss. We can talk about this destruction, fire, chaos. We can, and then in this case, oh, that's a great idea. Let's change it a little bit to say chaos happened when my house burned down to the ground. And then you can say, you did a great job, excellent work. You started off, there was a small grammar problem, but you have the idea, great work. Chaos happened when my house burned down to the ground. And that's just another way to get, to paint this image, like what we're talking about, paint this image of what chaos is. When we talk about ideas, this is when we're going from one of these bum 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 one of these words to another word to another word how can we connect these words together uh, <laughs> we can connect for example these two these are these are actually pretty easy to connect together i'll move this down this is our next stop oh. how can we put these two together so if we have the word in awe of I wonder if anyone remembers what, <laughs> what this means. <laughs> uh, in awe of, to be in, in surprise, in, in shock, for example. 
in shock, but it's a, it's normally a good thing. It's normally a good thing. So I'm off. Um, I was in awe of my, <laughs> for example, I was in awe of my sister when she grew, when she grew to be, uh, well, let's, let's, let's not be too dramatic, three meters tall. <laughs> well, three meters, that'd be about nine feet. Yeah, that'd be about nine feet. So uh, yeah, that, that I I I'm shocked. Yeah, I would be shocked if my sister were nine feet tall. <laughs> that's uh, that's very very high, very very tall. To resolve the height problem, she went to the doctor. Um, the doctor, for example, who the whole person. She then became, um, she then became the best <laughs> basketball player ever. <laughs> so then she, she then became the best basketball player ever. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, my sister apparently, is, she's not, she's not, she's not nine feet tall, not yet, <laughs> but who knows, maybe something could happen in the future. Um, so here, what, what have we done so far? Let's take a look. Already, we've used the word in awe of, and we, we, we created a sort of story that connected in awe of to another concept, to resolve, to resolve something, to fix, to change, to correct, things like this. But how did we how did we connect them? We connected them here in a story, in a, in a logical story, a story, well, logical, I'm not sure, but <laughs> in a story that makes sense. We can even go one step further and we can say, for example, um, however, uh, my, uh, the basketball, uh, games were chaos when she played because people <laughs> were afraid to play with her. <laughs> she was too tall. Too tall. There we go. So now we add even another idea. We're basically connecting these ideas together. So you can connect them through story like I did. You can even connect them through, or obviously you don't connect them, but you get the student to connect them. You can connect them through bubbles, for example. Let's say that here you have one. This is what this is in awe of, okay? So I'll put this up, 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 put this here in awe of, in awe of. So we have this example of in awe of, okay? We have also an example of chaos, and we also have an example of resolve. Here, in this case, uh, these are not really the best words to use for for this kind of activity, but I would I would definitely recommend the story activity if you're going to connect these together. But how how are these words connected? You can write down different, maybe different synonyms, different words that have the same or similar meaning to these. So like we said, in awe of, this is, is similar to in shock. Oh, there we go. In shock, for example. Uh, in resolve, we said, this, we said it was very similar to, uh, 
to 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 to, to finish to a change up finish with the change put we'll finish here And they share chaos, like we said, is something that's similar to um, uh, hectic, hectic, cra crazy, crazy things like this. Out of these, out of these three, which ones are more? Which ones are more similar? You know, I would probably argue that words like shock and hectic maybe even crazy are more similar so it, it could be easier to create connections between between these two words and figure out what exactly what chaos made you in awe of something try to connect that to a sentence connect it to an idea connect to something that is important to you so there you go <laughs> that's a a very long 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 um <laughs> warm up but a little bit of a revision to talk to you about the Feynman technique. Like I said, you've learned the you've learned the concepts. You teach it to yourself or to somebody else. You think about okay, what happened? What was difficult? What was what do I not remember? What was what? Where did I get stuck? Quan say where did I get stuck in something? What was what was hard to teach basically? And last, what can I simplify? Remember, simplify here. Make easier. What can I simplify? Or how can I change my teaching to make it simpler for my student? That's the payment technique. But if you have any questions, go ahead and post a comment down, down below. We can talk about that together. As Wow, we've done a lot. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so for today, I want to talk about something a bit... Similar, we've talked a little bit about it already. What are derivatives? The word derivative, I wonder if any of you know it. This is a, a word that has so many different meanings. So many different meanings. It's it's here, for example, we can talk about financial derivatives. What are the, the types of contracts that can be created between two or more parties? Talk about stocks, bonds, all the different types of assets. We can also talk about derivatives and calculus, <laughs> which I am not going to talk about <laughs> because I am not a calculus major. <laughs> but I put a video here in case you are interested. This is I, I really like this YouTuber because I um this YouTuber helped me a lot through a lot of my college exams, a lot of um, you know, getting me up to that point of understanding, you know, what am I doing <laughs> in math? It's a, it's a really great YouTuber. Really, really, really great, easy to listen to, easy to, to understand, easy to listen to. And even Cambridge, for example, has their own, um, has their own definition of a derivative, which we'll look at now. Uh, what is this? I'll take a second and all my, all my Nintendo <laughs> things I listen to here. There we go. So when we talk about derivatives, it says here, if something is derivative, so it can here it can be an adjective, it is not the result, it's not the end of something, it's not the outcome, but it's been developed or copied from something else. Hmm. His painting style is very derivative. Here, like we said, if we talk about the if we go back to the, the idea of connecting things, of creating meaningful sentences. This is not really a meaningful sentence because it doesn't give us the understanding of what derivative means here. But here, a form of something that is made or developed from something else. So it starts, it starts here. This is the original. Let's say this is the original. This is the derivative. What's different? Here we have a circle. Here, what's different is we have these three things here to add. It looks very similar. They're both circles. But here we have something that's a little bit different. This is, of a, this is a derivative of seaweed that is currently used as a food additive. Again, it doesn't exactly give the full meaning of the sentence, of the, of the word. It doesn't help us really to understand what derivative means. 
But if we use the definition, a form of something that is made or developed from another form, we can understand that seaweed, which is the, the little green grass that grows in the sea, seaweed, this is what they're talking about is not seaweed, but a different form of seaweed that is used in food, basically. <laughs> Here we get into things like things like finances, which we're not really going to talk about today. So there are three big definitions of uh, that we see here, derivatives. Now, how in the world is that going to help us learn languages? How can that help us learn languages? And we'll get to this in a second, don't worry. A derivative is, is a phenomenal, 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 phenomenal word that we can use to learn different, exam learn different uh, expressions. For example, one that we used already is a, uh, be derived from, for example, what was the thing, what was the word that we set up here? Up here we said that simplify is derived from simple. What does that mean? Simplify is derived from simple. I'll put it here. Sim simplify is derived Derived from simple, the word simple. Uh, I think it's here again. Derived from the word simple. Now, simplify and simple are not exactly the same word, right? But they look very similar. Simplify is derived from palms from the word simple. We can put it here. To come from and come from to be derived from when we talk about a derivative we talk about a sort of a sort of alternative not really alternative but a sort of something that is connected to it right like what we've been talking about all the entire class something that is connected to the original idea, but it's not exactly the same idea. Um, derivative of, uh, uh, of the Latin, or uh, excuse me, we can say of the French word, uh, what's the French word we can use? Mm, we'll, make, we'll make it a little bit easier. <laughs> this is one of my favorite my, one of my favorite Disney movies for example Malevolent um, derives from the French word uh, the French word <laughs> Malevolent <laughs> meaning um, a maléfique plutôt, maléfique. I think that's a malé, maléfique, meaning evil or meaning evil, ill bearing, oh. evil. Mm, what can we say? Ill, up, oh, ill bearing, for example. It's the last time I'm going to use the English keyboard. Jeez, <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> Maléfique meaning evil, ill-bearing. It's something that brings evil into. It's it's malevolent. Talks about a um, it it talks about the queen in Sleeping Beauty. Basically, the evil, the evil queen, the evil witch. It's the whole story about her perspective, and it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies. Not only because the actress is. Phenomenal, just a, a real queen. <laughs> but I just, I just love, love, love the story. It's phenomenal. But the word malevolent derives from the French word maléfique, meaning evil or ill-bearing. So we can see here, malevolent, English, malevolent and maléfique, they're not exactly the same word, are they? 
they're they're a little bit different. But we can say that this word comes from this word. So to make it easier, which word comes first? The first one we want to put metaphique with the accent here, excuse me. Metaphique is is the first is the first one. In in this, in this, of course. The second word is this. Malevolent. It comes from, it is derived from, it derives itself from. So derivatives, when we talk about uh <laughs> I, I wonder if you think I wonder if you can guess, if you can imagine where I'm going with this. Derivatives are going to be words that come from maybe one language or in our dialect into another language. And some and I love, love, love this lesson because there are so many things we can learn by learning other languages. And if you were learning English right now, you already know that. You already know that there are so many things we can learn by learning another language. When it comes to to for me, it was my first my first um for foreign language was Latin. Well, technically Spanish, and then I went into Latin, and then French, Turkish, Chinese, Japanese, uh, and I kept going from there because I love talking to people. But derivatives, um, you know, derivative was a word that I learned for the first time in Latin, and I see that there are lots of. I see there are lots of red lines here. I promise these are all, these are all uh, English words. It's just that my autocorrect is not in English, <laughs> of course. But derivatives are, it's a word that I learned in Latin. And so we'd have all, you know, we had have, have all of these lists of vocabulary words that we'd have to learn. I'll make this up a little bigger. We had a list of all of these vocabulary words that we had to learn. And from these vocabulary words, we, our teacher would ask us, what are some derivatives you can see from these words? What are some, what are some words that look like English words? Do you know any English words that look similar to these words? And so at the end of every test, you know, of every exam or test, there was a small section of extra credit, you know, extra points, where this, the teacher would give us a Latin word, and we had to write as many derivatives as we could. So we could write, for example, there was a word, um, if I give you the word, odio, odi, we'll keep it in the verb form, odire, odi, I'll put it in the, in the first person, odi. There's so many words that come from this. So many words that come, that come from this. The word here, odi, means I, means I hate. And we'll keep it as hate, as hate, hate or detest, detest, hate, you know, <laughs> dislike, <laughs> Facebook thumbs down, <laughs> hopefully something you will not do for this video, thank you, <laughs> oh, these. Uh, so there are lots of, lots of derivatives that come from this word, for example, we have odious, something that is hateful, Something that is hateful. Something that inspires hate. For example, I um the way you are acting is odious. Mm, you should be <laughs> ashamed. You should be ashamed up of your behavior. I have my cat in the corner who's snoring. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you hear that. <laughs> I love my animals. Odious, hateful. The way you're acting is odious. It is horrible. It is hateful. It is <laughs> thumbs down. Nope. You should be ashamed. You should be embarrassed about your behavior. Odious. And so this is we this is just one word, but imagine we would have five or six um Latin words. And our teacher would ask us to write all the derivatives that we remembered, all the derivatives that we could think of to um for each of these, for each of these words. 
And there's so many, so many we could think of. A lot that had to do with birds. I remember that. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Now, when we talk about derivatives, it's important, and I'll, I'll rearrange this a little bit later to make it easier to see. It's important to differentiate, to, 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 to know the difference between, um, between um, derivatives and synonyms, okay? Derivatives are not synonyms, okay? When we talk about synonyms, here we're talking about the source. We're talking about words that are similar. So for example, derivatives could be um, simplify. Like we said, I'll keep I'll keep the same word here. Oh, I'll give you a different word, actually. I'll give you a different word. Um, <laughs> cooperate, cooperate. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep that. This um ah facilitate, for example, is the word facile, which means to make easier, to work, to make things easier, facilitate something. However, when we talk about synonyms, a fa facilitate. A, a synonym for facilitate. There we go. A synonym for facilitate is to um, is simplify. A synonym for facilitate is simplify to make easier. Uh, another word we could give instead of simplify could be um, to discombobulate. Yeah. Um, simplify to. to ease for example to ease things like these you see the difference between this is here we have a derivative here we have facilitate is derived from the word facile from the word easy ease something they're very similar they look very they look almost the same however this is different facilitate is almost the same word as simplify, almost the same word as ease, almost the same. And that's very important for you to, to, to understand the difference between these. So what I'll show you here is, uh, it's a, a site that I use for, for it's, it's excellent. If you're, if you're writing a paper, if you're learning, if you are writing paper, writing an essay, writing in English, speaking in English and you realize I, I want to learn new words for this. Oh, let me show you. This is amazing. This is an amazing site that I found. So let's say we look for the let's let's work for the, let's look for the word um facilitate. Type it here. And like I said, ease, simplify. These are different synonyms that mean uh, almost the same thing as as facilitate. Ease, help promote sometimes, I guess, yeah, further something, to expedite something, to assist something, to simplify, alleviate, to make it easier. All of these are, are synonyms of the word facilitate. So I really, if you, if you, if I, I recommend this every time that I do, um, that I look at, that I review, I peer review some of my colleagues' um, papers or essays or I grade papers. I always recommend that people use this because it's, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal site. Not to mention, look at this. If we if we take a look, click on ease. Uh, let's, let's see, where can I go to this? Um, ah, here we go. We have a full list of synonyms here. We can filter all these words by the noun, which ones are nouns, comfort, repose, rest, relaxation, phrasal verbs, if you want. So we have different phrasal verbs, if you know what those are. Um, phrases, for example, well-being, peace of mind. And what's cool is look at this. You have other <laughs> other words with different with different images as well, similar words. I, it's so, so relaxing to see, huh? I, I really, really, really recommend this if you if you are are interested in writing things like that. So there you go. If you have any more questions about that, go ahead and put it into the comments and I will be happy to respond to your questions. So we've talked about that. 
and talked about derivatives. So we see that derivatives are a little bit different from, from synonyms. Derivatives are things we are, are words that are basically the origin, the source of, um, of other words or other, other ideas. So with that said, let's move down a little bit. And I want to take a look at, actually, move this back up. Oh, I'll move this back up. There we go. I want to take a look at this. This is, <laughs> if you don't understand, great. <laughs> That's excellent. This is a, a, a Latin um, poem by Catullus that um, is very, very, very well known. O di et amo, quare et facim potasur queer, des nescius et fieri sentiu et excrucior. It's, uh, it's a, a sort of love poem. <laughs> we'll get into the meaning in a little bit. All I want to do is I want to take a look at this, and I want you to tell me what are some of the words, and what are some derivatives of these words that you see? Oh, I will review, excuse me, let me put this, hide off this, there we go. What are some of the uh, what are some of the um, the derivatives already? Like you said, we've talked about Odi. Odi has the word that we talked about that was if anyone can remember. Odious, odious, which means hateful or inspiring hate. Odious. So here we have the derivative. And here we have the synonym, synonym of the derivative. Of the derivative. We have Odi. I can tell you there are a few of these things that we can that we can take a look at. I think almost all of these words have English derivatives that can help us understand what it means. But the point is not really to understand what it means. The, the my goal in this is for you to find the words that you see think about what derivatives there might be and then work together and then we can work together to think about what this might mean afterwards so i'll put this i'll put this together i'll create a little um a little translation here for you i hate and i love why um, you might ask, do, 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 do. I'm trying to find that there we go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I feel myself burning. But I feel it, or you can say I got feel it, and I am burning. I am in excruciating pain. In pain, we can say. So here we have the meaning that we talked about. But oh, there we go. Oh, took a second. Here we have the meaning. I hate and I love. Like I said, the me the point the point is not to translate. That's not what we're talking about here. I gave you the translation. In case you in case you want to use it to think about your derivatives. If we take a look at this, we have the word amo, which here looks a lot like the English word amorous. Amorous. In love with something. In love with something. We even have the word, another word that can come from it. Um well, in French, we have the word amiable. Uh, what else can we think of with here? Amorous. Um, and oh, we can also say amicable. Amical. Um, excuse me, amicable in English. Friendly, in a loving way. Friend, in, in, a, in a friend loving way. Amicable. Amorous. Amicable. Think about all any other words that, that resemble this. And if you have any other ideas, go ahead and put them in the in the in the chat below. There are so many, so many other words we can pick up here. 
here we have the word uh, require, which means to demand or to ask for. Demand. And you see, it, it seems so it seems at first so so difficult to think about how if we don't understand Latin, how can we use Latin to understand to create new English words? What are some other English words that how do we know what we can think of? You know, one thing that when I did this with my with one of my teachers, I was I was doing this in a class where it was I think I think it was there were five Americans. Two people from another, from one person from a Franco, from a Francophone country, one person from a Greek country, one person from from Greece. Excuse me, from um, who is the person from? I think she spoke German. I think, but each person in the class brought different derivatives based on the country that they came from. You know, so for me, I'm seeing a lot of. And you, you saw it here when I wrote the word amiable, the French word amiable, amiable. I'm I can also put that as well. Actually, that's, that's, the English, that's the English word as well. Um, amiable, lovable, lovable. Now, here's another derivative from it. Something that helps us when we're learning a foreign language is to be able to create connections between the word that we're, the words that we're learning and other words that mean similar things. So here, for example, require might be a word that that you can learn from here to demand or to to um, yeah, we can even say to ask for. It's a it's a little bit further away, but it is still considered the synonym. Ask for uh, another word we can say is a requisite, which is a very requisite. You can see how similar requi requisite, which is a um, a an obligatory thing, an obligation, we can say, obligation. And you see what's happening in my mind when I'm thinking about this. When I, when, I, when, I was when I was creating a synonym between requisite and obligation, I didn't go directly from requisite to obligation. The first thing I went to was, ah, a thing we need to do, an obligatory thing, okay. Requisite, obligatory thing, obligation. I went through the the. I went from the derivative to the to the synonym to the, to another derivative. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. This is just this is another way that we can think about creating connections between words that maybe are difficult for us, but that allow us to improve not only our vocabulary, but the way that we think about and the way that we connect the vocabulary together through derivatives. So obligation is another word that is it's used all the time, and that is requirement. Requirement. Look at this. It is exactly the same word, except for the is, uh, the personal ending at the end. It is the same word. Requirement. Look at this. Requirement is something you have to do. It is an obligatory task is an obligatory self, something you have to do. You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to do. And look at this, in, in just one line, I mean, we, we, didn't even talk about, we didn't even talk about this one, which can give us at least, at least 10 different, 10 different derivatives, derivatives, excuse me. There's so many different things. Even this one, it leads directly to the <laughs> derivative it, which is what it means, it. But why would you ask it, for example? You see, that's the derivative for so many of these words. Imagine, we can also have derivatives in other languages and even within our own language as well. Within English, we have derivatives from English to English to English to English. <laughs> it's so much fun. You know, it's sort of like a small game that you can play to allow you to, to go a little bit further with, um, with, 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 with your learning and with your vocabulary. Now, N-E, it means not. And this skew, it means to know. Oh, okay, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna let me do that. So we're gonna do it here. It means to know. Oh, let's make it, let's write it correctly. There we go, to know. 
when we talk about when we talk about something we don't know, we can say something that is. Um, I wonder if you've heard of this word before. Here I'm putting a few things together. When we talk about um, literature, which is something we'll do in the, in our next class, actually, we're talking about different perspectives and not a tunnel vision, but an omniscient point of view. I wonder if you can determine what this means. If this means to know, do you think omni, omnivore, omni, um, omniscient, omnipotence? There are so many different things we can come, we can, we can create from here. But omni means all. So here we're creating something that is, we have a perspective that is all knowing. Uh, we're not gonna all equals knowing. <laughs> nope, uh, all knowing. Think about it. When we have um. Sometimes when we read a book, you know, we have some books that are. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you right now. But we have some books that we we read the entire book from one perspective. For example, it's always I I I I I I I. For example, in this one, it's very much I. You see I here. I I I I I I I. I. It's always I I I I. This is not omniscient because we only see one perspective. We only see one person's point of view. But there are some books, there's some novels that say he, she, it, it, it talks about all the characters. We, we understand the thoughts of all the characters. We are all seeing, we know everything. Omniscient, omniscient. And here, I mean, we can get into so many other things. I mean, just look at this as well. We get into... We get into this one, sentia. This is possibly this is probably the easiest one here, because we're talking here about sentio. I feel. Sentiments. Sentimental. Uh, I'm not gonna put it here. I'll put, I'll put it over here. We have the word sentiments. Sentimental. Sentiments are our feelings. So the I have the sentiment that you <laughs> that you love my my YouTube channel. <laughs> I have the sentiment, I have the feeling that you love my YouTube channel. It's it's true, right? <laughs> Sentimental. Is someone who who shows uh, their feelings a lot. Now, I am definitely a sentimental person. It's very clear when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm angry. Uh, I show my emotions very easily. Uh, so <laughs> I will never play poker with any of you <laughs> because I would not be very I would not be very good <laughs> at poker to show their feelings. Um, Teacher Brandy is sentimental. Uh, uh, for example, this morning I taught the class on the movie Coco, especially um, when he watches the movie Coco. It's a Disney movie that talks about um, La Dia de, la, Dia de, de los Muertos. It's a Day of the Dead. And Whenever I watch this movie, I have tears just falling down my eye, <laughs> falling down my face. I absolutely love this movie. I'm so, so it's it's phenomenal. And of course, during the class, I'm <laughs> I'm sitting there trying to teach, and I have tears falling out my eyes. <laughs> and the poor student was looking at me like, "Is what is going on? <laughs> is he okay?" <laughs> that sentiment, sentimental. Already, as you can see, we've gone through what two lines, not e not even two, not well, technically not even two, um, up, 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 not even two. There we go. I'll put this up here. You can have it here. We haven't even gone through two, um, two sent two sentences. 
because normally the way that we understand this is more like this. We haven't, normally we haven't gone through two sentences. We're still, we haven't even gotten to <laughs> the best, the best word of the of both sentences. And look at all these words. We've come up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We've gone to 10, 11 different words in, in, in just two sentences. This is the power of derivatives. We can use one derivative to understand what other, what other words could be. So this is just Latin. We'll get a little bit into it. I want, I'm so excited because I love this word. <laughs> I want to, I want to work, I want to share this word with you. All of this is used for this last word that I want to teach you. Oh, put it down here. There we go. That is excruciating. It's a, a a huge word, but it's a it's one of my favorite words. Excruciate, excruciating, excruciating. What am I? Oh, excruciating with the C. Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. That's why I'm excruciating. Extremely painful. Extremely painful, extremely, extremely hurtful, extremely bad. Um, after I fell um, down the stairs, there we go. <laughs> this describes me to a T. After I fell down the stairs, um, I was in, I was in excruciating, excruciating pain. Now, this is this is a good meaningful sentence. After I fell down the stairs, you know, I had all of these uh that 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 and I woo <laughs> woo teacher Brendy is falling down the stairs. Boom. I fell all the way down the stairs. Now, do you think I feel good? <laughs> obviously not <laughs> no i feel like i want my head is going to explode i do not feel good i do not feel happy i am in pain i need to go to the hospital i am in excruciating pain and this is the big part here it's not just excruciating it's excruciating cruciating excruciating pain here the ci makes a sh like a like you're talking to a baby excruciating pain excruciating pain i i do not feel good i do not feel happy it's 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 such a it's such a beautiful word it has such a negative meaning but i just love this word excruciating uh excruciating for example if i say the word if i say the the, the phrase excru excruciating li loud what am I talking about? Let's say that, um, <laughs> for example, Christmas is coming. <laughs> and in my in my neighborhood, in my region, we have what's called um, Firefighter Santa. <laughs> Firefighter Santa Claus. Excuse me. Firefighter Santa Claus. And it's a uh, clause. There we go. It's it's so cute, you know, because on the fire truck, I wonder if I can just show you a picture. That might be easier. Let me show you a picture real quick. Oh, so firefighter Santa. There we go. Firefighter Santa Claus. It's so cute because on the fire truck, you have oh, it's in different places. Well, this is in Bogota, Colombia. Okay. But here on the fire truck, you have Santa Claus that sits on the fire truck and throws candy to everyone you know it goes around to all of the different neighborhoods and it's really it's really cute the kids love it the only thing is the um this this uh i'll put this here this fire truck is excruciatingly loud it is so loud my ears i i can't hear i, I can't hear for a day or two after it because it's it's non-stop non-stop and people it's it's such a fun event but it's just it's it's too loud too loud it's too excruciatingly loud think about this 
loud, very loud, too loud, excruciatingly loud. So loud, it, it gives, it makes my ears hurt. Makes my ears hurt, too loud. I'll go ahead, clear all my drawings. <laughs> that was fun. So let's go back. Let's go back and take a look at this. Excruciatingly loud. Look at that. In one, two lines of Latin, and it can be in French, it can be in Latin, it can be in, in English. We've learned so many different words. We've been able to go through all of the different words, uh, not even all, but a lot of different words that that come from come from these Latin these Latin words. It's derivatives. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments. Don't hesitate to send me an email, to send me any messages. I've already received quite a few, quite a few messages and quite a few um quite a few emails about some of my past classes. I want to thank you all for uh, for all of your messages and all of your support. It's been really nice. It's been really nice. But this in a nutshell is derivatives. This is what it, this is what it is to to go through different to go through all of these different uh, <laughs> all of these sentences and be able to find words that are almost exactly the same the synonyms and words that have the same root that have the same structure the same same type of words in them those are derivatives so we'll talk about this um this is just some these are just some cultural connections that i have for you uh some some things that i have uh, one thing I want to add to this lesson that I haven't I haven't really haven't been able to add because I didn't think about it is you know what concretely does it look like on tests tests and um, exams derivatives we talk about exams you know talk about things like on you know how can we put derivatives on the tests and exams how can we get students how can we help to how can derivatives help us to understand what words, what other words might mean. Let's, you know, one thing that I did is that, for example, let's say we had the word um, simple. I have the word, um, um, what's in the word? Mm. Well, we use uh, simple, we can use the word, um, uh, what was the word we just had up here? The word we had up here. Da, 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 da. Shint, omni, we can say omni, for example. We can use this as a, not exactly a derivative here, but here we're talking a little bit about um, prefixes, affixes, prefixes, suffixes, affixes. So for example, let's say that we have this um, this on a test. We can add, we can add the, the, the word here. Put a line here, omni, the line here. And what you what your job would be, what the student's job would be, is to easily just create words that would be, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Create words that would be derived from this word. So simplify, uh, simplify, simplification, simplification. Um, you know, something like simplifies does not work. Why does this not work? Because this is just this. It's not, it's not a different word. It's not a different word. So here, simplifies, conjugated does not work. Simplify is, is okay. Simplification is okay. And you keep going with this. What are some other ways that we can change or modify this word to make it into different different words. Omni, here we can add different words as well. You can say omniscient, uh, omniscient, um, omnipresent, um, omnivores, someone who eats everything. <laughs> Me, <laughs> my cat, for sure. <laughs> you know, something crazy. I um my my cat Coco is a bit um she came back from vacation last week I think I was on vacation last week and she came back from vacation with me and you know she had a little she got a little bit sick because she was nonstop playing with uh, playing with the kittens and she was meowing all day long for a whole week 
Well, she came back, her voice was tired, and so now she, when she meows, it's not meow, it's meow. <laughs> it sounds like she's she's kind of been smoking all of her life. <laughs> she's a chain smoker. But um, so we went to the vet yesterday and we got a <laughs> we got a uh, the vet gave us some pills, right? He gave us some some pills to give to Coco, the one pill a day. Normally, you're supposed to hide the pills in the the wet food, the pate, the the pet, the wet food, so the Coco, so that so, you know my cat will eat it without thinking. This cat, <laughs> she and she just woke up as well. She heard the sound, but I opened the the pills. I put it in my hand like this. She jumps onto the desk, comes over, and she eats the pill out of my hand like it's a treat or something. I've never seen that in my life, right? <laughs> so when I say that my cat is an omnivore, I really seriously mean she's an omnivore. She eats everything, <laughs> everything. So anyway, getting back into it, I'm having way too much fun here. <laughs> this is just one way that we can add, that we can add a little bit of fun, maybe gamify our tests a little bit, have some fun with that. So there you go. There's a little bit of that. So we'll stop here with um with the I don't know what this is for. We'll stop here with the um with derivatives and synonyms. And what I want to do before I stop is to take it to, to show you a little something. Uh, I wonder if I can uh, I'll make myself a little smaller then. I want to show you something that I I did when I was, you know, as I as I've been going up, you know, learning different languages as well. Uh, these are some works. We we call these works and we call these up works in translation. Uh, up, 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 up. Works in translation. So obviously these are in French. This is in in Latin. But what we did is you know in at the end of high school we we had to read all of these in English and use these as a way of understanding something different. So what I've done is I've given you. Of course, it's not going to give me the. Uh, it gives me the French word, and that's all. I'll, I'll fix that after the class. But um, I've given you three, three, three texts here, and a little, a little, you know, a small little um, uh, article for you to read for each of these. This one talks about absurdity. It talks about philosophy. When we're talking about Camus's this the stranger and the foreigner, uh, the stranger is the real, the real meaning. Mariam Abbas, uh, so long a letter is another word. It's another one that we that we read. It's a phenomenal, a phenomenal book. I really, really, really like it. Uh, and here we're talking a lot about loss, a lot, a lot about loss, a lot about creativity. And I have an article here. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit more academic. So um, take your time reading it. Even if you read just the first part, the beginning, the introduction, and the conclusion, it's enough. It's it's, it's a really nice article that I, that I read about it. And here we have the Aeneid. Okay, so Virgil's Aeneid. And but it's life lessons. It's it's there's not really anything to read. It's just a quotation and photography, but uh photography, um painting. Uh, um a famous painting and this and uh different quotations that help to understand life lessons from the Aeneid. What I'm gonna ask you to do. And I'll put this. I'll put this above here. Is I want you to. I want you to first take a look at. So choose one. Uh, choose one of these, and then once you choose it, I want you to read the article. I'll make this a little bit longer so you can read it. Read the article, and. Try to see if you can see if there are any words that you can find derivatives for. So here, these are, I think you can find derivatives. Oh, let's make it a little bit there. You, go. you can find derivatives for. I think the Aeneid will be the hardest one because there aren't many words. Uh, so long a letter will be the easiest one because there are so many words and the words are academic level. So they're a lot higher, which means you'll start with the you'll start with with these words and you'll have to find this word. 
see if you can find any derivatives in, in, in any of these three. So you choose one and see if you can find some derivatives. So once you, once you do that, go ahead and post it below in the comments or feel free to send it to me. I'd be happy to, uh, to receive your, your, your feedback. And that's it. So choose one, read the article, see if there are words you can find derivatives for. If you want to go further, you can even see if you can find uh, synonyms as well. But for now, let's focus mostly on derivatives. And just to leave you with two amazing books that I, I really, really like. There is a Pecha Kucha presentation. It's it's a type of, of teaching that is type of, I guess, teaching that kind of, it's basically what we did at the beginning with the, the Feynman technique. You are teaching something to someone else. This is part of a, this is part of the Feynman technique, which Pecha Kucha is a way of presenting something with 20, 20 different images. And you have, I think, less than a minute, less than two minutes to to use each image. And it's a way, basically, this is a presentation on this book by a real student, I think in the States, if I'm not, mis if I'm not mistaken. That's, that's something you can read. It's a phenomenal book, but it's definitely more advanced. If you like murder mysteries, because I love murder mysteries, I most definitely recommend David Baldacci's The Winner. It's a it's a great book. <laughs> it's just, it it keeps you on the edge of your seat like this, <laughs> but it's a great it's a great book. It's it's really 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 phenomenal. And what I have here is because there are a lot of there are a lot of characters in this book. Is I have a character organizer, a graphic organizer for you. Feel free to print it out. It's not I did not create this. It's Freeology that created this. But it's a it's a phenomenal way to to remember what exactly this character does and sometimes these character organizers they allow you to see who the uh, the murderer is before you before you're supposed to know so uh be very careful but <laughs> but it's a great way to um it's a great I, I did this i remember with um with uh with my seventh grade english teacher for for a film i think it was west side story that we did this and it was just phenomenal it it helped me understand the the movie and the and the plot so much better, so I definitely recommend that you print this out, and uh, fill this in. What is the character's name? What how, what are some ways that you can describe the physical characteristics? What about their personality, their role in the story, and then some quotes that they use to describe them, or just some important quotes that you think that you really liked, and that's it. So, I want to thank you again for uh. At, joining me in this uh, fun adventure through different language different languages different cultures different vocabulary words different learning techniques different stories different countries i mean look at all of this that we've done in just one class wow we've done a lot so i want to thank you for all of this thank you for joining me and i wish you a great day now have a great day i'll see you in the next class bye-bye